Welcome back to The Wargamer and another Bolt Action tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to paint the Deutsche Afrika Corps using the miniatures from Warlord Games and the Army Painter range of paints. Before we start painting we first of all need to apply a primer so that the later layers of paint are due to the miniature's surface. It doesn't matter too much which colour you go for but I've opted to choose a grey airbrush primer to help paint the various midtones of the miniature. The first area that we'll be painting is the green uniform. For this we'll be starting off with a base coat of army green. As with all of the base coats that I'll be painting in this video, you'll want to mix this paint with some water in roughly equal quantities to make the paint easier to work with. With our paint thinned out, we now want to paint the entirety of the jacket and trousers. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage with your first layer as this is why we watered down our paint. After applying your first layer, allow the paint to dry before applying a second layer over the top. This layering technique will give a much smoother finish whilst avoiding the possibility of obscuring details by applying the paint too thickly. After base coating the uniform, the next step is to paint any canvas areas such as the bread bag and the webbing. We'll be starting off with a base coat of Banshee Brown. Remember to thin down your paint to ensure an even coverage. Continuing with the equipment, I'll now be base coating the felt collar of the water bottle and also the leather strap of the rifle using a base coat of oak brown. The next area of the infantryman to paint are the boots and wooden furniture of his rifle. To create a slightly reddish brown colour, I'll be using dirt spatter as a base coat. Depending on what weapons your infantryman is armed with, the wooden areas may either be limited to the butt or even non-existent, so make sure you double check before painting. To paint the yellow helmet and gas mask canisters, we'll be using a base coat of desert yellow. In this next step, we'll be painting the black parts of the miniature, which will cover quite a few different areas. These include the metal parts of the weapon and also the leather pouches around the belt. For all of these areas, we'll be using a base coat of necromancer cloak. Now you may have noticed that Necromancer Cloak is in fact a very dark grey and not black, but this will be important later on when we come to apply our washers so that we get some definition between the lighter and darker parts in the recesses. One of the final areas to base coat is the skin, and for this I'll be base coating using Cobalt Skin. You'll find applying several thin layers of paint particularly important in this step in order to get a smooth starting colour. With our base coats completed, we now want to apply a wash of military shader. But before we do so, we need to again thin it down. This is because applying it straight from the bottle would be much too strong. However, instead of using water, this time I'll be mixing in some of the Army Painter's Quick Shade Mixing Medium in equal parts wash to medium. The medium works by reducing the amount of pigment in the ink without changing its consistency. I find that this results in a much smoother and more subtle result than mixing in with water. However, if you don't have access to this medium, you could instead use a distilled water. Using this thinned down mixture of military shader, you want to apply a good layer over the jacket and also the trousers. For the various brown and yellow areas of the miniature, I'll be applying a wash of strong tone. To add shading to the areas that we painted using Necromancer Cloak, use a wash of dark tone. Finally, for the skin, we'll be using some flesh wash to help to add some definition and bring out the facial details. Once the washes have dried, we now want to add some highlights to help improve the level of detail. To do this, lightly drag the tip of a thin brush along the raised edges. This will create a small line of lighter paint along the raised areas, helping to improve both depth and definition. We will start off by painting the jacket and trousers using combat fatigues. By thinning down the paint with just a little water, we should make this task much easier as the flow of paint should be smoother than if you use it straight from the bottle. To pick out the folds of the canvas bag and the webbing, we'll be using a base coat of Drake Tooth. We can finish off painting the dark brown areas of the miniature with an edge highlight of the lighter leather brown. The final step in painting the reddish brown areas is to pick out the edges with a thin line of fur brown. Some of these areas are very small so take your time, use a thin brush and remember to mix in a little water with your paint. To paint the edges of the yellow areas, such as the helmet and also the gas mask canister, use a thin line of skeleton bone. Continuing with the yellow areas, we'll next be adding some chipped paint using necromancer cloak. However, instead of a normal brush, I will instead be using a small piece of foam dipped in paint. Then I will be lightly dabbing this foam onto the helmet in areas that damage may occur. Once the step is completed, we'll be left with the effect of chipped paint. The next area to highlight are the black leather areas, and for this we'll be applying a thin line of spaceship exterior. 
Finish off painting the skin with a highlight of Corpse Pale. Using this paint, you'll want to pick out the more prominent features of the face with a thin line. These areas include the nose, lips, chin, and also the cheekbones. In this final step, we'll be using the metallic paint Gunmetal to highlight the edges of the metal parts of the rifle, and also to base coat some of the large metal areas such as the buckles and pouch buttons. By highlighting the edges of the rifle's metal, we'll create the effect of blackened metal that has become worn through use. And here we have the completed DAC Infantryman. I finish things off by varnishing the miniature before creating a simple basing scheme using some textured paints and grass tufts. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video, such as my everlasting wet palette. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching, and goodbye.